Hello and welcome back to We Are Unique. Don't forget, if you want to email the studio, you can do it. It's wau at europentv.com. In this episode, we're talking about young girls with Asperger's syndrome and trying to get a assessment of PDA. And now I'm joined by the lovely Deborah Blythe. Thank you, Deborah, for joining me in today's show. Can you tell me a little bit about the early years with Morgan? When did you first know that there was something wrong? There was lots of little things, like um, she always had to touch my skin um, while cuddling, you know. It was it was a sensual thing to send, you know, at all the senses. And, uh, the, like, the feet in the baby grow, they used to irritate her, so we had to buy them without. Um, she always was insistent on feeding herself, even though she couldn't. She was trying to take control of that, which was really odd. Um, dressing was, I was, oh, she wanted to try and do it herself, but she wasn't old enough to do it, and she'd create big time. <laughs> so there was lots of little things. Did she, did she have, like, meltdowns or, or...? Oh, yeah, they were full-blown, like, you know, the, the terrible twos, but when Is she was like, she a few months it old... Herself? Yes, yeah. yes, ever, she was total control from when she was tiny. Yeah, it was really odd. And we knew there was something then. All these little things were just adding up. Yeah, it was... Um, we 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 kept going to different people and asking and, you know, the development and that. And we'd say, this is a bit odd. And they'd say, oh, don't worry about it, you know. it's. She'll, she's doing really well, and she's uh, meeting everything she should meet, so don't worry about anything. And that was it, so we just carried on, <laughs> as you do. So when did you first notice uh, about the diagnosis part? Did, were you mm. going to the GP saying there was something wrong? Yes, or? yes, we went to the GP, and uh, they referred us on to having um, a hearing test, because it's like she was always miles away not listening and when that came back as normal so okay it wasn't that so um then we went back to the gp we were going by this time you know to a first school nursery and nursery they had no patience with her because she would she would wet herself a lot so they were like you know we shouldn't be dealing with this and she would when she was upset she would scream not cry, it was a scream, and you could hear it from the next street. It was, you know, that's how hard she would scream. Mm. So, yeah, we went through a lot of asking and pleading, and as you do, until she got to school. Mm. And then it was worse. She, she found going to school very hard. She didn't want to line up with other children. Um, she found it hard standing up. We found out she had lax ligaments, and so her legs ache all the time. Um, it was it was all these little things that were all going into one, making life very difficult for her. So, what was the actual age she got diagnosed? What age? Oh was gosh, she? she was in middle school, and she was seven, I think. Yeah, about mm. seven. And we tried everything with school. We were saying, can you get somebody in to assess her? Oh, yes, we are doing. A year later, nothing was being done, and Morgan's attendance was dropping and dropping. Do you think it would have helped if, if Morgan was diagnosed before that? Oh, yes, yes. We wouldn't have sat back and let them deal with it. We would have pushed and pushed and pushed. But we didn't know. We didn't understand it, because Morgan wasn't fitting into every little bracket. So we we knew there was something else, but we weren't we weren't sure. Mm. We're just parents. So how how do you think? Just going off the subject here, but how do how do you think of people? Well, women, because obviously it's more odd to get a diagnosis uh, on the spectrum yes. with women. Yes. How do you feel when people get diagnosed in the forties and fifties? Oh, I fit, personally feel sorry for them. They've had to go through the whole system mm. of. Um, being treated in a different way. I was treated differently. Um, I'm dyslexic. I am I know I have difficulties because I, I couldn't read and write very well myself. 
Um, and I was extremely shy and scared. And I copied my friend's work all the way through school because mm. I didn't understand the thing they were telling me <laughs> at all. So mm. I know it's, it's in me. So growing up, Morgan growing up as a young teenager now, what, what sort of challenges have you faced and what challenges has she faced growing up? I think most people, I would say, with a child with uh, autism, um, Asperger's, um, anything, they would tell you that it's, it's a fight. Everything is a fight to get anything. You fight from day one. We've been fighting now 16 years. And it's hard work and it's not fair. It's not fair just because your child isn't in those pigeonholes. And because she doesn't quite get in there, then, oh, we'll just give her this to do, we'll give her that to do. It doesn't work. So just talking a little bit about PDA now, because you, you think as a family that Morgan has PDA. Yes. And you've been trying to get a, an assessment and yes. diagnose. So what struggles have you faced with that? Staffordshire, it doesn't really exist in Staffordshire, which is a huge shock. Um, because we're now trying to get an out-of-area uh, diagnosis and we've only just found out about this. The actual PDA Society told me to do this, so that's the next thing. So you've got to go all through trying to get your child to go to the young adult, go to the doctors, which isn't their favourite thing to do. Mm. And PDA is everything about having to... Um, how do I put it? Uh, it's, it's all about uh, you're asking them to do something and they avoid it because you're putting something on them, mm. a demand. Mm. Everything's a demand. So it's and, like pressure, is it? Yes, huge pressure, which causes high, high anxiety. And what Morgan goes through on a daily basis is, is really difficult for her and us mm. to see it. Not, not good at all. So do you think over the years, uh, do you think her confidence has come on or do you think she's still, still the same? Her confidence has gone from when she was, I don't know, about four, it's gone down and down. But it, it really hit rock bottom the last three years. have been really bad. The, uh, um, not only has she faced all the people that don't understand about PDA, um, in schools, in everywhere you meet, oh, she'll get, she'll get over it, you know. Give her a chart to work by, or anything, you know, the usual things that do. They do help the average child, but not Morgan. If she, we think she's PDA, um, it's it's a total different set of rules. You have to work with her. You can't tell her to do anything, so. So do you think that with having the, obviously we, you think she's got the PDA, but having mm. the Asperger's syndrome as well, do you think it's, if she just had Asperger's syndrome, do you think by having the, the PDA as well, while there's more challenging? Oh yeah, totally. I so is everything magnified oh, even yeah, more? Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's huge. It's like I go, to, I go and take Morgan to school and I see all the other children there because it's a special school, a lovely school, and they're all, they're all really happy. And Morgan is so, so inside herself. She can't even do the things that the, the average child with autism, autism and Asperger's does, she can't do it. She finds it highly stressful. If somebody touches her, her senses are really, really high. It's, it's a huge challenge just to get through a day. I really, really have a lot of respect for her, mm. I really do. And we were talking earlier on before you came on to the show this morning, mm. we were talking about uh, some of her strengths. So oh, she's, yes. she's got really good strengths. So you're telling me that she can do <laughs> Uh, special effects, makeup oh, really well. Makeup, Morgan is amazing. Um, she she really concentrates on. Like she knows everything there is to know about everything there is about makeup, the pigmentations, everything. We sit there and listen to her. And she's like, 
she just looks overwhelming what she comes out with because she's so good. So would you say that's uh, sort of like maybe, I don't know whether, because I don't know much about PDA, but I'm learning more about it as the shows go on. But do you think it's more, uh, not? would you say it's an obsession or more of an interest or she just it's a, tunnel vision as she yeah, focused on yeah. that subject? No, it's a real, real interest, a passion. It's a passion, I'd call it. Um, because she she actually um, has been asked, we went to a shop once, I, I won't name it, but went to the shop, and the lady actually asked her, would she be able to come and work there and tell others how she, you know, how she does her makeup and would she uh, recommend products to them because she's so good. You know, obviously it's a, it's a huge thing to Morgan, not yet, she's not ready for that just yet, but that recognition was huge to her. Mm, it was a good confidence boost. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the thought of being asked to go and work somewhere, offered a job, yeah. was massive. <laughs> I can't... So who knows, maybe when she grows old, she could probably work on TV doing exactly. special effects like... Exactly. You know, like That's these hospital wants... programmes yeah, and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That's what she wants to get to in the end. That's, that's her goal. Yeah. And I think she will get yeah. there. So as a parent, do you worry about a future? I do, but it's the... I, not, I do, but I know Morgan will get there. I know she'll get in the end to where she wants to be because she's so clever. She is amazing. I, I can't tell you how much I love and admire her. She is... She's, She's just brilliant. She, she's focused. She, but if she didn't have the, the people in the background making life harder for her, as in attendance, you know, getting into school is so difficult for mm. her. And when she does it, it'd be nice to get, you know, be people to say, well done. You've mm. done amazing by getting here today. But, yeah, I think she will. And I think a lot of schools lack that, don't they? They where, have to. Where, where the, you know, yeah. I suppose the, you know, they, they can't say that to every child, but I think, you know, in a special setting school, if they give that child their, their extra bit of confidence boost... Yes. ..just by saying, you know, well done for coming in today, yes. you know, not, not ease a star badge or but ease, no. a, ease a little reward, yeah. you know, m maybe, you know... Uh, you know, s something special like an end of year show or something like and something that. Something at the end of year would be brilliant. Yeah. I don't think they could do it on a weekly basis because uh, to do that for Morgan would be make it more a demand again. <laughs> it's so difficult, the demand avoidances. Everything has to be on Morgan's terms. Yeah. Otherwise, the, um, what's it called? The, the anxiety. Mm just goes massive and she she doesn't cope so do you, do you would you like to see morgan the next i know i know i know i'm just putting a scenario figure on you but would you like to see in the next 10 years or 20 years married with children and whatever she wants to do yeah. i'm happy i'm happy uh with her being happy if morgan wants to meet someone get married Fine. I'll be behind her all the way. I know she will eventually, yeah. but I don't know what the timing will be. Um, she doesn't even like boys, to be honest. <laughs> she doesn't like them at all. Uh, <laughs> she's extremely shy, but yeah, I yeah. think she'll she'll get everything. She'll have children, and I think she'll be a great mum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Deborah, thank you for joining me oh, on today's thank show. It's you. been a pleasure to have you on. And we'll be talking to Morgan just after this short break.